So what is next for Yu-Gi-Oh? What's the future for Yu-Gi-Oh? Also, before we dive into today's video, this upcoming Thursday, I'm shooting for 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are going to have a deck profile up on the channel with the man, the myth, the legend, Jeremy Mitchell with his first place cash tier deck profile. So if that interests you, be sure that you sub to the channel, have that Ding Dong Taco Bell notification bell on so that you can, you know, have your Ultra Balls ready to consume this cash tier deck profile that was main decking three copies a dark hole. Sweet baby Jesus. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1200 ladder. Y'all know the drill and what y'all need to do. I'm really appreciative for all the support. So I want to talk about just a general discussion about the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! as I pull up my editing software here as I'm trying to multitask. And the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! And now that we are officially in the quote-unquote nationals offseason, as I've called it before, and what is there really to expect with the game moving forward? So first things first, a ban list. <sighs> You know, we're probably not going to get a ban list until August or September, right? Right? So if your holes are not prepared, if your sphincter is not tight enough, it's going to get tighter because you're probably dealing with cash tira until August or September, Sugar Boo Bear. B besides the fact that the top four was all cash tira and that Jeremy Mitchell literally, at least for the most part, I would say, won nationals because of Eradicator. Like, people were literally screaming, ban E-Rad, ban E-Rad. One of my buddies uh, posted a video on Facebook in our Jacksonville Yu-Gi-Oh! group where, like, the people that were watching Jeremy's final match all were, like, holding up an Eradicator epidemic virus on their forehead and were just screaming, like, please ban Eradicator. So Konami is obviously now aware of the issues that surround this card, and uh, it... It needs to go. It needs to be taken out back behind the barn and shot. And what's funny is that, like, it's only a matter of time, probably, until the other virus cards get banned. Deck Devastation Virus is really freaking broken. Grinning Grave Virus is really freaking broken. So, yeah, you're, you're going to be in this format for a while. There is the potential that, like, at some point this month, they could suddenly drop a list, but I think it's going to probably be more like August or September. October would be really late because then that's five months, but September would be four months. August would be three. The Duelist Nexus uh, regional season starts August 12th, so do keep that in mind. And we also don't have a date for Worlds either, so take that for what you will. Now, Duelist Nexus as a whole... Revolution Synchron is a revolution of a card, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Duelist Nexus is not a Power of the Elements level set. However, what it does inject into the game is enough to where people are going to turn their heads and be like, you know, th these are some free chicken nuggies. Like, this is... This is some pretty good stuff. You know, besides the fact of, like, the Crimson Dragon stuff, I, I think that that stuff will, like, at most be Tier 2 out of the gate until the hype kind of dies down and people realize, oh, hey, if you kill the Junk Speeder, you still win the ball game. You know, that's that's the biggest thing with the deck. I do think, however, that based, aka Badass Sexy Engine deck, as we called it here on the channel a couple years ago, will make a return in some way, shape, or form into the meta. Uh, just because of all of the new tuner stuff that we're getting. Like I said, I mentioned Revolution Synchron. Wheel Synchron, as cool of a card as it is, it's a level 5, so it just doesn't gel well. Um, just with based in general, or badass sexy engine, excuse me. I gotta get back in the groove of saying that again. So, you know, if it weren't level 5, then yeah, you could do some neat stuff with that. But basically, the only way you can cheese it out is speeder. And someone's always gonna negate the speeder, whether it's Ash, Imperm, or whatever. And, of course, like, we still don't even have a date for Worlds, and I think Worlds will, I think it's just going to be its own thing. I mean, most people don't really pay attention to Worlds other than, like, oh, if, you know, if Cash Tira were to win, well, Cash Tira is definitely going to get killed on the next list, uh, along with Eradicator and all that other stuff. But in regards to, like, diversity, too, I feel like we're still going to be in a really diverse format. I mean, if you look at the top 64, and hell, even the top 32 of Nats, 
there was a lot of diversity. A Sprite Purely deck made top 64. I still like to think I had a hand in that because your boy came in 29th place. I know that's technically not top eight, but it's the fact that we proved that the concept was viable outside of the top eight build uh, from Ireland, from their nationals. We showed that the concept can still be achieved and that you can take this to an event and do well. Now, moving into Duelist Nexus, do the decks in the current meta get better? And honestly, yeah, they do. I mean, Purely gets the Purely Shirley trap, which is kind of like a, I guess, a Tri-Brigade Revolt in a sense. Basically, you just summon a Purely from your deck, its effects are negated, and then you drop an Exceed on top of it. Then you can attach a Quick Play to it with the same name as one that's already on the original Exceed you targeted. It's cute. It's not really going to see play in the sprite purely build that your boy's going to be playing so i had to rebuy my whole damn deck <laughs> but uh it is what it is I'm, I'm spending less money than i did selling the cards so we made money um but the the trap is pretty good the noir rank two is very good being able to ditch a card and also be able to use sleepy memory to make it is very very good um that's just more gas for sprite purely and purely in general i think will get better i feel like we're going to see a good amount of changes on our next ban list too. You know, I really feel that we're going to see Delicious Memory come back to three. And I think depending on how Purely does being back at full power, plus with their two extra cards of support out of Nexus, we may see what um, the OCG did and they'll put like Purely Sleepy Memory to one. Um, because in the OCG, they still have three Delicious Memory, but they have one Sleepy because drawing six cards possibly during the opponent's standby phase is really freaking good. Um, and yeah, they just don't want to deal with that. And like I said, Noir is the purely exceed that you make off of the Sleepy Memory. So uh, yeah, it's just, it's toxic all the way around there. But in regards to diversity, that's very healthy. You know, I think that once we get a new list... I think that Cash Tier and all that's going to get pushed out, and then we're going to see a lot more Synchro stuff come to the forefront. You know, uh, there's no, like, super broken archetypes in Nexus, and of course people, are, I'm sure, are going to talk about the 25th anniversary Dark Magician-looking thing that's going to be the Quarter Century Secret Rare in the next few sets moving forward. That's kind of booty-booty butt-cheeks to me. That is what it is. But in regards to, like, the game being healthy and honestly kind of cheap... Like, yeah, that's one of the great things about Yu-Gi-Oh! post-national season is that really, at most, for a couple hundred bucks, you can play whatever deck you want now, Sugar Boo Bear. Like, real talk. Like, uh, right now, at least when I last looked at uh, Sprite Blues earlier today, the Secret Rares were like 20 to $25 and the Ultis were like 30s. So, like, if you want to play some variation of Sprite, for maybe 150 to 200 if less, if you know you can get those homie hookups at your locals, you can play a sprite deck for like what, 150 bucks, you can play Cash Tira. Eradicator, as broken as it is, it's a really cheap card. It's had several reprints. So it's not like you're gonna be breaking the bank over that. Cards like Baron right now are $40. Things like Excel Synchro Stardust are below the $40 mark. I think they were 28s when I checked yesterday. Like that's really good, especially moving into a set like Duelist Nexus that is so synchro focused. So like, if you want to invest in something, now's the time, pimp. Like there's no better time. Yeah, you kind of take that risk of, hey, this could get hit on a ban list. But I don't think we're really going to see Konami drop a list anytime soon. Like, I know I already mentioned that, but it's really something important to keep in mind, especially when you look at all the previous times that they've dropped a list around this time. They dropped one on, like, the 15th of July. They dropped one, I think, on the 21st and the 28th of July. All the other times, it's been, like, the ninth month of the year, which is kind of awkward in a sense because they actually dropped a ban list on 9-11. That's, um... Really awkward day to drop a ban list, in my opinion, but the, I think that was back in like 2021. It was just, yeah, it's it was a thing. Uh, they dropped one on the 15th of September. So like they've done it a couple times in September and other times they've done it in August. So it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I don't think we're going to see anything like Super Heavy Samurai's where the link gets banned uh, a month after, you know, Super Heavy becomes good. But it's fine because we're also in a pretty diverse format. And I think that, People should realize that as we're moving into Duelist Nexus, like 
it's adding on to an already pretty diverse format, I would argue. So Yu-Gi-Oh is looking really healthy right now. And if you want to pick up meta cards, now's the time because it's pretty cheap to do. You know, yeah, they could go down if they get hit or they could go back up after we get a brand new balance because this is usually around the time that people sell their cards. So it's an easy way to make free value, ladies and gentlemen. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Well, is there anything that I missed out on that I didn't talk about? Ain't no point talking about Master Boo Boo Stain because it's a Boo Boo Stain. It's still a big piece of turd crap. Guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.